I'm Bruce Turner. I'm the visual effects supervisor on the show. I've uh, been on the show since the beginning of season four. In season four, an awful lot of what we did for effects were Andromeda in space, Maru in space, um, battles in space, things like that. We got into it a little bit more towards the end of season four where we had um, full CG shots that were terrestrial, not in space, um, which is hard to do. And, and by the end of last year, we were getting to the point where the team was strong enough to pull that stuff off. Um, and we've continued to do more full CG terrestrial stuff with the CIFRA planets this year. So that's been quite a, quite a good challenge. And then we've been doing a lot more plate work, um, like with the, the town of CIFRA. Every time we shoot out in the, the CIFRA back lot, we replace above the tops of the sets and extend into the distance with CG elements. So there's been a lot more integrating live action and CG, whereas in previous seasons, there was CG shots and live action shots. One of the goals is just to try and make everything a lot more tightly integrated to make it a lot more real so that that it's not, you know, look at me, I'm a CG shot. It's just the shots just go by, you know, it's just, wow, that was cool. Harper's lost his mind. Was that Rami? What's left of her? With Lexa, with the, the Andromeda character, um, we've had to basically do head replacements um, because, because of the pregnancy, she wasn't able to wear the wardrobe. And so we've, they found a, a suitable body devil who we, we shot basically from here down, and, uh, and then we shot Lexus, Lexa, Lexa's head and composited them together. We had an episode earlier this season with quite a long VR sequence. It was uh, four and a half minutes, I think. I, I think it was 65 shots. That is burned in my mind, the 65 shots part. It's Rami and Dylan having a, a two-handed conversation over a number of scenes, and that was all, all head replacement. And it was Kevin and Lexa filmed on green screen, and then everything else in the shot is CG. How long do you have to work on something? Eight days. How is that possible? That's a good question. I often ask myself, how the heck do we do that? Um, yeah, la last year I think our I think our lightest show in season four was 70, 74 shots or something like that, and our heaviest show in season four was one hundred and seventy nine shots. There's generally a fair number of muzzle flares in th and things like that in the gun battle scenes, which the fans have apparently dubbed spark fights which I love. I think that's, I think that's very fitting. So in, in the spark fights, there's often a fairly high shot count. And um, so those are fairly straightforward shots, but are a high volume of them. But we often have uh, between 20 and 40 and sometimes more full CG shots, you know, like ships flying around in space and stuff like that. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a challenge to, uh, to organize it all and to deliver it all to to editorials so that they can get it all cut in and and you know and make sure that everything is quality control checked so that it doesn't create problems further down the line in post production cuz the post production schedule is pretty tight you know particularly with this year because we uh, we got a little bit of a late start on the season so it's, you know, everybody's got to really stay focused and just, you know, got to get through the first nine shows. Glamorous Seafra. Well, one that we've been doing a fair bit this year um, would be um, the street comets on Seafra. When we're outside walking around in the town, the, the, the idea is that um, there's just 
stuff constantly falling out of the sky on Sifra and it's just part of daily life and people take it for granted and and so there'll just be some little little chunk of asteroid some flaming something that comes whistling out of the sky and slams into something and smokes it and Heads in up. the first huh? episode this season where Dylan is, has just sort of come to the surface and is walking and seeing Seifer for the first time and is is kind of taken aback by the first street comet that that he experiences and everybody else in town is pretty nonchalant about it because for them it happens all the time. And so what we do with that is um, production will shoot a plate of the live action and the C for set and then we'll fill in the background with a set extension and replace the sky and put in a CG comet that comes whistling in and crashes into whatever it's supposed to crash into and Darren Marku and the special effects guys will have rigged up um, quite a quite a nice little explosion so they'll do the explosion and that'll appear in the live action plate and and uh, we just match that up with our with our CG asteroid and time it out and looks great Mommy? No. It's nice to have real things that are going on in the plate that we can marry our CG to because, because the, the real stuff kind of lends credibility to the CG. You know, it, it helps to sort of ground it in the shot and, and make, it, make it more believable. There's, there's lots of little... Lots of little things, really subtle things that, you know, your your eye, your eye and your brain know. I think it's probably some some hunting thing that's hardwired into our brain that that we know how things are supposed to look. Even you know, even if we're not conscious of it, there's something in our brain that goes, nah, I don't buy that. That's not right. And so, wherever you can, you always try and think of what those little cues would be, you know, reflected lights and shadows and things like that. And so having practical elements that that will really help to sell that, usually that, that really helps, that makes the shots much cooler. The miracle of the, the PC revolution pretty much allows us to do what we do. Our compositing stations are fairly high-end dual processor Xeon PCs. We composite using discrete combustion and Adobe After Effects. Our 3D is almost entirely done in Lightwave. We have a small amount of 3D um, done in uh, 3D Studio Max. Um, we, used it, we used Max a little more last year. Um, we hardly use it at all this year. It's 95%, 98% Lightwave. Lightwave is, is a really good piece of software for the kind of things that we ask for it to do. Um, but it's all PCs for the, the production machines. Um, we have, um, we have a, an editing station with Final Cut where we get a copy of the timeline from editorial um, so that we can load the entire show um, onto a timeline with the the edit decision list um, so that we can see how the show is, is built by the editors and then as we do visual effect shots we can drop them into the timeline and look at them in context and adjust them accordingly so that it kind of helps improve our batting average with editorial that when we deliver them things they don't look at them and go well that doesn't work you know, so it doesn't always save us from that. We still have the odd, the odd bump, but uh, but mostly that helps. Um, and we use the Final Cut Station to do um, input output to digitize shots in from the the digital masters tapes, and then to output it back to digital tapes so that the editors can online the show. Um, We've got um, 
a fairly large render farm. Again, all all PCs. Um, I think we've got about 40, 40 processors. So, you know, it's not not huge, but but not bad. It it gets us gets us through, and uh, um, we have quite a quite a genius uh, system administrator this year. So he's really squeezing every every bit of performance out of the out of the system and and uh, <clears throat> you know big it's for for a lot of what we do it's all about the networking just because you know shots moving back and forth to the server and passing from the 3D artist to the compositors and stuff like that so we've got a pretty big fat network gigabit ethernet all over the place multiple streams and just to try and make everything as fast as we can but it's all pretty much off the shelf hardware there's nothing nothing fancy how are we in weapons we're there i'm army target the mines what it's the only way walking on fire one of the the litmus tests that we often apply to a shot is will the fans think it's cool like Oh yeah, we should do that because the fans will totally think that's great. You know, like that's okay. Then let's do it. I don't know. I, I hope there's lots of stuff that they like. We certainly try hard to do it. You know, the you know we had some some big sequences in the uh, in the two parter, the climax to season four. We had some some stuff in there that uh, that I think was pretty cool, and uh, you know, lots of fairly long sequences where. It's just CG shot after CG shot, just back, boom, boom, boom. You know, some really nice action and good cutting and stuff like that. So, you know, I, th I think that we can, we can, um, we can do, do cool things and extend the reach of the show.